Retired Admiral James Sandy Winnefeld spent four years as President Obama's vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's also a former commander of NORAD, which is charged with preventing air attacks against North America. Admiral Winnefeld is with us this morning from Washington. Uh, good morning, Admiral. Uh, you hear time and again in diplomatic circles that words matter, particularly on issues of this high a consequence. Uh, how do you understand the president's tweet this morning? Well, good morning, Margaret and, and Charlie and Vlad. Uh, I think that, uh, first of all, I'm encouraged that the president is uh, committed, like previous presidents before him, to modernizing our nuclear arsenal, because it is our ultimate deterrent against uh, any kind of threat, including one from North Korea. That modernization has been going on for quite some time. Uh, it will continue. And so I'm encouraged that he's uh, fairly calmly tweeting out uh, this morning that we, we remain committed to that. Uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson seemed to be taking a step back from the rhetoric we heard from the president yesterday and really emphasizing again that there is a diplomatic way out from this. Uh, do you believe that the president is directing his statements at China or at Pyongyang right now? Where's the pressure point? Well, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, I think it was a, an outburst of sorts. Uh, I would counsel being circumspect, circumspect in our rhetoric, because after all, we are the great power here, not North Korea, and it doesn't do any good to descend into what you might consider sort of angry playground rhetoric. I think the good news is that we do have uh, folks like uh, Rex Tillerson and Jim Mattis and Joe Dunford, General Joe Dunford, uh, who are the adults in the room who are, are staying very calm here, and I think uh, Secretary Tillerson is actively pursuing diplomatic uh, solution to this problem as best he can, and I would encourage him to continue doing so. Do you believe the North Koreans want to use nuclear weapons against the United States? No, I don't, Charlie. The, this is uh, merely a survival mechanism for them. Uh, they are running an impoverished, isolated nation. They've seen other nations who've given up their nuclear weapons, uh, what's happened to them, and they've decided to rely upon this as their regime survival mechanism, not only externally, but internally. So therefore, uh, can, so therefore can we live with North, North Korea having nuclear weapons? I wouldn't go so far as, as saying we can live with them, but I think we really need to just let them stew in their own juice, leave them alone. They will never use these weapons, nor will they ever give them up, uh, but, as long as we don't provoke them into using them. But you seem to be saying uh, they will exactly have them, uh, and we should not stew uh, and get their juices going, but we should leave them alone having their nuclear weapons. Uh, I think the key for us, Charlie, is that we maintain the twin pillars of deterrence. Uh, one of those is what we would call deny objectives, and that is to maintain both regional and national missile defenses, continue to fortify those. Uh, in that regard, I think there's some more work we could do to defend Hawaii, but we're in pretty good shape as far as missile defenses go. And the other half of deterrence is imposing costs, and that is continually reminding North Korea that if they should be foolish enough to use a nuclear weapon against our allies or us, that they will bear a very, very heavy consequence. Let me understand exactly what, what you're doing. saying. You believe that we have, and you should know, a nuclear defense system <clears throat> that will work against any attack by North Korea. We uh, just recently, Charlie, uh, tested for the very first time our national ballistic missile defense system against a true representative intercontinental ballistic missile threat like the one that North Korea is developing, and it performed with flying colors. We also have very capable regional ballistic missile defense capability in the THAAD missile system, which we've installed in South Korea and Guam, and also the very capable missile that we're co-developing with Japan. So yes, we are in, I believe, very good shape as far as ballistic missile defense systems go. Nothing's perfect, but they're very good systems. And they're getting better. They are. Yeah. Admiral, you said you don't think North Korea will use their weapons, but they won't give them up. One of the concerns I hear from U.S. officials is that they could sell them because they are demonstrating <clears throat> increased capabilities here. Isn't proliferation another threat that we haven't heard a strategy to counter yet? It is a very big concern, and I think that uh, is why the entire international community needs to make a very strong statement to North Korea that not only will you not use these weapons, you will not proliferate them either, or there will be very serious consequences. And the intelligence community, of course, is very focused on that problem, not only the development, but also the potential for proliferation of, of uh, nuclear capability of any kind. Do you believe North Korea is our biggest national security concern, or is it some other country? Uh, you know, Charlie, I've always worried a lot more about the, the great powers, and in particular Russia right now. We have a very angry Russia who was expecting to have a very a compliant administration, uh, and that has blown up in their face uh, with heavy sanctions. 
Uh, Vladimir Putin faces a re-election campaign next spring. So I tend to focus my major attention on that particular threat um, more than North Korea, although we have to take the North Korean threat very seriously, to be sure. All right. Admiral Winfeld, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. My pleasure.